Blessed is our God always, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Blessed are those who raise it blameless. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your commandments. Hallelujah. My soul is consumed with longing for your laws at all times. Hallelujah. My soul has grown weary from sorrow. Strengthen me with your words. Hallelujah. This fear possesses me because of the wicked who forsake your commandments. Alleluia. I am among those who fear you and observe your commandments. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and always, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy. We pray to you, hear us, and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the rest of the soul of God's servant, Catherine, who has fallen asleep, and for the forgiveness of all her sins, both voluntary and involuntary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. May the Lord God place her soul where the righteous rest. Let us ask for the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the remission of her sins from Christ, our immortal King and God. Grant this, o Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For you, O Christ, our God of the resurrection, the life, and the rest of your servant Catherine, who has fallen asleep, and to you we owe for glory with your eternal Father and your all holy good and life giving spirit now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Your hands have made me and fashioned me, enlightened me to learn your commandments. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Though I have become like a wineskin in the frost, I do not forget your commandments. Have mercy on me, O Lord. I am yours, O Lord, save me, for I have sought your commandments. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. I have inclined my heart to perform your commandments forever, and I wait your mercies. Have mercy on me, O Lord. It is time, O Lord, for you to act, for they have disregarded your commandments. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever, and to the ages of ages, amen. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Let us 
us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. You are the resurrection. Yeah. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your departed sister, Catherine of Christ our God, and to thee we ascribe glory, together with your eternal Father and your all-holy, good and life-creating Spirit, now and always, and unto ages of ages. Amen. And mercy on me, alleluia. Look upon me, and have mercy on me, and is your way with those who love your name, alleluia. I am young and despised, yet I do not forget your commandments, hallelujah. Hear my voice, O Lord, in your steadfast love, quicken me in your justice, alleluia. Powerful people persecuted me without cause, yet my heart stands in awe of your words, alleluia. My soul shall live, and it shall praise you, and your commandment shall help me. Like a lost sheep, I have gone astray. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commandments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the rest of your departed servant, Catherine, who has fallen asleep. And to you do ascribe glory together with your eternal Father and your all holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your commandments. The choirs of saints have found in you the fountain of life and the door of paradise. May I also find the way through repentance. I am a lost sheep. Call me back, O Savior, and save me. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your commandments of old. You created me from nothing and honored me with your divine image. Having transgressed your commandments, you return me again to the earth from which I was taken. Restore me to my original beauty of your likeness. Blessed art you, O Lord, teach me your commandments. I am an image of your indescribable glory, though I bear the scars of my stumbling. Master, take pity on the work of your hands, and in your loving kindness cleanse me. Grant me the homeland from which I yearn, making me again a citizen of paradise. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your commandments. Grant rest, O God, to your servant, and place her in paradise, where the choirs of the saints and the righteous, O Lord, shine like stars. Give rest to your servant, who has fallen asleep, overlooking all of her transgressions. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Spirit. Let us praise the threefold splendor of one divinity, crying aloud, Holy are you, O Eternal Father, Co Eternal Son and Divine Spirit. Enlighten us through faith and worship, you who deliver us from the eternal fire. Now and forever and to the ages of ages. <coughs> Amen. Hail, O pure one who bore God in the flesh for the salvation of all people. Through you the human race has found its salvation, and through you may we find paradise. O Mother of God, pure and blessed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to you, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory 
to you, O God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to you, O God. With the saints, give rest. Oh, Christ, to thy soul of your servant. Where there is no pain or sorrow or suffering but life Sting. What pleasure of life remains unmixed with sorrow? What glory has stood unchanged upon the earth? All things are more feeble than a shadow. All things are more deceitful than dreams. For an instant death replaces everything. However, in the light of your presence, O Christ, and in the sweetness of your beauty, give rest to her whom you have chosen, for you love mankind. As a flower withers and dreams vanishes, every person perishes. When the dead hear the trumpet sound like an earthquake, they will rise again to meet you, O Christ our God. Then, O Master, place the soul of your servant whom you have chosen from among us, O Christ, in the dwelling of your saints. All human things are vain that do not exist after death. Wealth does not remain, nor does glory go along. For when death comes, all these disappear. Wherefore, let us cry to Christ, the immortal King. Give rest to her whom you have taken from among us in the dwelling of all those who we rejoice. The mystery of death is truly most fearful. How is the soul abruptly separated from its harmony with the body? How is this most natural bond severed by the divine will? Therefore, we pray, give rest to your servant in the dwelling of your righteous, O giver of life, for you love mankind. I recall the prophet saying, I am earth and ashes. And again, I thought about the graves and bare bones, and I asked, who therefore is the king or the soldier, the rich or the poor, the righteous or the sinner? But give rest, O Lord, to your servant with the righteous, for you love mankind. Your creative command was my beginning and existence, for you will to form my life out of visible and invisible nature. You created my body from the earth and gave me my soul, by your divine life-giving breath. Wherefore, O Christ, give rest in your servant in the land of the living, in the dwelling of the righteous. Give rest, O Savior and giver of life, to our sister, whom you have taken from this temporal world, who cries glory to you. I weep and lament when I ponder death, when I see our beauty formed in God's image, lying in the tomb, bereft of form, disfigured without glory. Oh, the wonder of it, how did this mystery befall us? How were we given over to decay? How when we paired with death, surely at, as it is written by the command of God, who gives rest to the departed. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Your death, O Lord, became the means of immortality. If you did not lie in the tomb, 
paradise would not have been open to us. Wherefore we give to her whom you have taken from among us, for you love mankind. Both now and always, and unto ages of ages, amen. Pure Virgin, gateway for the Word, Mother of God, intercede that her soul may know your mercy. Blessed is the way in which you go today for a place of rest is prepared for you. Blessed is the way in which you go today for a place of rest is been prepared for you. Blessed is the way in which you go today for a place of rest is prepared for you. Let us be attentive. Blessed is the way wherein you walk today, for there is prepared for you a place of rest. Unto you, O Lord, will I cry. Wisdom. The reading is from St. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Let us be attentive. But we would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do with have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry and command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, and then we who are alive, who are left, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Peace be with you, the reader. Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. The Gospel according to John. Let us be attentive. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. The Lord said to those who came to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but is passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. I can do nothing on my own authority as I hear I judge and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. Have mercy.
mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy. We pray to you, hear us, and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the rest of the soul of God's servant, Catherine, who has fallen asleep, and for the forgiveness of all her sins, both voluntary and involuntary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Lord our God place her soul where the righteous rest. Let us ask for the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the remission of her sins from Christ, our immortal King and God. Grant this, O Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. O God of spirits and of all flesh, you trample upon death and abolish the power of the devil and given life to your world. Give rest, O Lord, to the soul of your servant, Kathy, who has fallen asleep in a place of light, in a place of comfort, in a place of refreshment, where there is no pain, sorrow, or suffering. As a good and loving God, pardon every sin which she has committed, whether in word, deed, or thought, for there is no person who lives and does not sin, except for you, the only sinless one. Your justice is eternal justice, and your word is truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For you, O Christ our God, are the resurrection, the life, and the rest of your servant, Kathy, Catherine, who has fallen asleep. And to you we offer glory, together with your eternal Father, and your all holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and ever to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Glory to your God, our hope, glory to you. May Christ our true God, as the immortal King who rose from the dead and has dominion over the living and the dead, through the intercessions of his most pure and holy Mother, the holy, glorious, and blessed Apostles, our holy and God-bearing fathers, the holy and glorious forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, his righteous friend Lazarus who lay in the grave for four days, and the prayers of all the saints give rest to the servant of God, Catherine departed from among us. In the dwelling of the righteous in Abraham's bosom and among the saints, may he have mercy on us and save us as a good and loving God. Eternal be your memory, our sister, who art worthy of blessedness and eternal memory. Eternal be your memory, our sister, who are worthy of eternal blessedness. Eternal be your memory, our dear sister, who are worthy of blessedness and eternal memory. Eternal be your memory, our dear sister, who is worthy of blessedness and eternal memory. <laughs> The church is an entrance, a passage from this life to the next, a Pascha, a Passover from death to life. The fear of death is dispelled as the love of God is revealed in all its glory. We desire that presence of God more than life here on earth. What those call death, we Christians call the beginning of real life. As Christians, we know that death is not the end. 
but rather the beginning, the beginning of life eternal. And because of Christ's great love for us, his death and resurrection, his victory over death, the gates of paradise are open for all who believe and follow him. When I first arrived in Boca Raton 10 years ago, Kathy asked me to visit her father, John, who was in an assisted living in Deerfield. Those visits turned into a beautiful friendship. I would make visits and often with my own children because I loved him so much. I learned a lot about the Cara George family, the good and the bad. And it was a blessing, a true blessing for me. Kathy, along with her sisters Pam and Nicole and brother Dimitri, who passed at a young age, were born to Celia and John and spent much of their childhood years in Fort Lauderdale, Mango Isle. The water was a big part of Kathy's life. She swam at a high level from high school to college and beyond. A truly amazing fact, which I did not know, it was at Tulane where she became the first woman in history to participate on the men's varsity team. Very awesome. It was through the water that she met Tim when they were part of the Boca Raton master swim team, married and blessed with their loving and kind daughter, Kara. The Greek word for water, which appears in both the Old and the New Testament, is associated with living water. Ithor zoin in the, in the liturgical Greek, life-giving water. In Jeremiah, the prophecy, the prophet describes God as the spring of living water. In John's Gospel, in the New Testament, the phrase is attributed to Jesus speaking with a Samaritan woman whom he meets at Jacob's well. We were there a few months ago. And I quote, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you the living water. The living water, Jesus. Water has many symbolisms in Scripture and also in the Orthodox tradition. We are born again and baptized in water to symbolize our new life in Christ. We bless water at certain times of the year. We bless our homes, our cars, ourselves, and we believe in its healing and sanctifying power. For Kathy, the water was a place to connect with our Creator and to find peace. She indeed lived her life as one who received the living water of our Lord. During and after a successful career as a pharmaceutical and hospital sales representative, always finding time to be a loving mother, wife, sister, and friend to all, she continued to be at her physical fitness peak, setting national swimming records, personal training, yoga instruction, and the list goes on and on. She was fully devoted to her family. She was fully devoted to St. Mark. She served in so many capacities and in ways that most of us do not even know. Kind, sensitive, loving, endearing. A saint of our church, St. Seraphim of Sarov, whose icon is right here, one of the new icons in the church, writes the words, Acquire inner peace and thousands around you will be saved. Acquire inner peace and thousands around you will be saved. This quote speaks about how we can change the world in which we live, how we can make this world a better place, and we do so by acquiring inner peace. And those whom we meet, interact with, share joy with, live our lives with, will experience Christ's love because of who we are. We acquire inner peace by the way we live, how we love, how we express the joy of the Lord to others. I believe every one of us here would agree that this is how Kathy lived her life. She worked hard at creating a peaceful life for herself and family, creating a sacred space with her mind, body, and soul. Her love for fitness and exercise, 
her love for reading, her prayers and meditation, her desire to share the gift with those around her. She loved to share her life with others. Kathy was a peaceful and loving person. She was someone who lived her life in service to others, always willing to go out of her way for one another. As a long-standing member of Philoptikos, the w women's ministry here at St. Mark that helps those who are less fortunate. As a member of our St. Mark Parish Council, a long-time member of our stewardship committee, greeter and ushers, and the list goes on and on and on. A devoted and active sacramental member of St. Mark. She didn't just know you. She really connected with you. Anyone who encountered her felt so close to her. She made you feel like family right away. In 2015, Kathy stood here and addressed the entire parish on stewardship and talked about what St. Mark means to her. It was truly inspiring as she spoke from her heart. She spoke about how this was a place where she found peace, love, and joy. In 1 Corinthians 13, St. Paul gives us his amazing analysis of love. He suggests that it is a progression. Without these two essential ingredients, you cannot have the zenith expression of love, faith and hope. So faith, hope, and love. There is no place, no place that we cannot go and escape the love of God. Whether in Michigan, Mango Isle, or Boca Raton, whether swimming in the waters or wherever it may be, traveling to Africa and the world, to Spain and the whole world, true faith will produce real love. But we must ask ourselves, do we have true faith? Kathy had faith. So much faith. Wonder Woman faith. Over the past six and a half years, she went through so much. I would say that's something most of us could not bear. I remember our first meeting at the church after she was diagnosed. We prayed, anointed her, gave her the book on St. Nectarius, who is the patron saint of those suffering with cancer. We prayed for healing, both physically and spiritually. While she didn't receive the physical healing that we all hope for, I know, I am convinced she received the spiritual healing. This suffering brought her closer to God. She turned toward him, not away. She turned toward him in the time of despair. She never complained, never had self-pity. When we ponder on the life of our Lord, we recognize that Jesus did not suffer in order to abolish suffering in the world. He accepted to suffer so that he might accompany us in our suffering, being like us in everything. He takes on suffering so that he might show us how to hope in the midst of suffering, that it need not lead to despair. Our Lord accompanied Kathy on her suffering here in this world, and she willingly and fervently kept close with him. Hope and faith are the very means of our relationship with God, the means of our communion and love with Him. Suffering endured for Christ in faith and hope makes us confront ourselves and cleanses us from our fears and becomes a means of communion with Him. Christ accompanies us in our suffering, giving us hope and the assurance that He has overcome the world by revealing to us His resurrection. We are heartbroken, we are saddened, we are at a loss for words. But we have hope. Hope in the next life. Hope in the risen Lord. Hope in the resurrection. During the past few months, and most especially in the last week, Kathy went through a beautiful transformation, I would say, as her priest. I got to observe. From fear and anxiety to peace and serenity from not knowing what was to come, from finding peace, what would come next. On the Thursday before she passed, she received the sacraments of confession and communion. 
on Saturday, she called me back to say that she was ready to leave this world. On Sunday, we gathered with her immediate family in Kumbadi and joined in an emotional circle of love shared with memories and tears. And we asked our Lord to receive her soul into his kingdom. On Monday, she passed on to the next life and was born again to eternal rest. On the bottom of Kathy's emails, it reads, live your best life now. This would be on every email she would send from her iPhone. Kathy lived her life to its fullest. Yes, not long enough, not long enough for those of us who knew her and loved her. But together with Tim and Kara, her sisters, their families, and her dear friends, our St. Mark family, she lived here. She lived her best life here on earth. She lived her best life here. But now, now she is really living that best life. The greatest life she or we can ever imagine. She is resting with our Lord. She is meditating. As she would breathe. She's at peace. There's no more pain. No more suffering. No more questioning. But she's in our Lord's loving embrace. She is at peace. To quote, quote the beautiful poem that you put in the back of the church. Lift up your heart and share with me. God wanted me now. He set me free. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Tim, Kara, Pam Nicole, family, Kumbadi, St. Mark family, on behalf of Father Alexander, Father Frank, Father Alex, Deacon John, I send you love from Father Stephen as well from afar who sends his love and prayers. We offer our deepest condolences. Know how much we love you all. We love Kathy. And we are here to support and to walk with you. And we are here to pray and to continue to pray for Kathy's soul. We've been praying for her so hard for all these years. And we're going to continue to pray that our Lord will embrace her in his eternal embrace in his loving kingdom. May God bless you. And may God give you peace as she is now at peace. Amen. As we are in the midst of this social distancing funeral that we do, we will conclude the funeral now. We will not have you come forward. The family has said their last goodbyes prior to you entering the church, and we will process the body out to the hearse, and I'll ask Gary Ponick from the funeral home, Ponick Funeral Home, to come forward so that we can prepare Kathy to process her to the hearse where we will take her for an immediate family only interment at the Boca Raton Cemetery where she will reside, her body, and her soul will live with our Lord. Thank you all. Amen. Our tradition teaches us that as our soul is being escorted to be with our Lord, that the angels are there by our side singing the Tedesayun hymn, Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Immortal, have mercy on us. And thus we sing that hymn as we process the body for the final interment. Holy God, 
holy, mighty, holy, mortal. Have mercy on us, holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal. Have mercy on us. Blessed is the way in which you go today for a place of rest. It is for you, blood.